assigned in this hour to my voice. And so with that, it's like, you know, carrying those of you. And so as we process in, in different things, there are things that he's downloading to me, different things that I'm, you know, with me being a sense, a sensor and a feeler, a discerner, you know, and that kind of thing too. Um, with that, I sense things, I feel things, I pick things up and it's like, is that my stuff? Is that your stuff? You know, is that the people's stuff? Like, what is this going on? Really, really. And so with the words that father releases, I just want to make sure that I'm a good steward because I believe that they will bless many of you. Blessings, Lady Ashanti, Lady Deborah, um, 811 to 91. All right. Victory, vindication, restitution, be it your portion in Jesus name, still trusting. And I got that Luke 18 in my Shondo. Um, so I will uh, make sure we continue to pray for that in Jesus name. Um, well, I believe God that this is a word that's going to bless many of you. I'm so grateful for our brothers that come on, you know, um, and, and I'm grateful for that word that it's going to bless you. I believe God that um, it'll touch those of you who are here and very encouraging. Um, some of it is somewhat specific, however, um, that God, God bless you so much for the super hearts. May the blessing of the Lord overtake you in Jesus name. Yeah, Brooke, um, Lady Brooke, <laughs> uh, Luke 18, one through eight. I would read that. And then Luke 11 and 11. I was in there earlier today and I believe that'll bless you. That's what's in my spirit to give you. So um, with this, he said that, you know, there is going to be a shift. And with that, many of you are going to be shifting during the same time as well. And so um, I want to be faithful to release so that if we crossing over together, you have what you need because I need you to cross on over because it's so time to occupy the land. It's so time to occupy everything that Father has spoken over us and promised us in Jesus name. Blessings to you. Um, Horain, God bless you. And so um, thank you so much uh, for the seed, lady peoples. May the blessing of the Lord overtake you in Jesus' name. Um, and so I'm going to jump right into the word. Like literally, it was so amazing because did I bring my Bible over here? That's interesting. I guess we might be reading this in the... Um, Oh, there it is. I was going to say, we're going to be reading this in the Passion Translation. I got a few translations over here, but I wanted to read it beginning in the Message Translation because it blessed me. Um, yeah, Amos 9, uh, verse number. Well, I would start at 9, 11 through 15 and then Luke 11 and 11. So um, literally I was in prayer earlier today and I was like, Father, I just need you to tell me something. I need you to show me something. And he is so faithful. He is so amazing. Like I can't even make this up, you know? And so I'm like, have my hands and, and then I begin to see different things. And then I felt led to go to Jeremiah. And that's why I tell you, I'm, I thank father for his um, audible words that he will release to us. I'm grateful for dreams. I'm grateful for visions. I'm grateful for, you know, e every way that he finds a way to speak to us through nature, what have you. It was like this morning, he says, stop what you're doing and um, and get a drink of water. So where my water was, I'm facing the window. And as I'm facing the window, literally I see on the top of the roof across from me, it was two birds that were perfectly perched there together. They were together. That should be an encouraging word for somebody who is believing God for restoration or for your kingdom marriage. And I was like, oh, that's so special, right? And so then um, later on, so as I was sitting and I, I think it might've been around six o'clock or so. And I was like, father, I need a word from you. And so he could have just dropped a word in my spirit. He could have caused me to discern, but he led me, I felt led to go to Jeremiah. And so sometimes this is in the process of the action, he'll give you more. So I just felt led, I should say, to go to the word. And so in my mind, I was going to go to Jeremiah. Let me go to the beginnings, Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, you know, kind of thing. And so as I was flipping, you know, because I think I would have been in Nahum. So I'm flipping back. And so I, I flipped too far, which is interesting for me because I don't really do that. Like I was at Jeremiah 32, like how you keep on flipping. But I just released that over somebody right now in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 32, 27. Hallelujah. Is there anything to 
too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing that's impossible for him in Jesus name. And so um, I flipped over to Isaiah and open before me was Isaiah 54. And it was a text of scripture highlighted. And so father directed me to look at that. And so underneath it and being in this translation, I had never read it like that. And I'm telling you, I began to read his word and I wept like a baby. And I believe it's so important to understand that the word of the Lord, the actual Bible, his written word is a love letter in 66 books to us. Like he always has something right there. And that's what I come to bring to you. Not my opinion, not my thoughts, nothing like that. I came to bring to you the word of the Lord. And so from the word of the Lord. And so I believe this tonight is going to minister to you. I felt led to hop on here. Um, blessings to you, Lady Farida. And so, um, um, I am in Isaiah chapter number 54, and I'm going to start here in the message translation, and then I'll switch over to the passion translation. Um, and I'm going to start here at verse number one. And um, I just like, listen, I, I didn't know if I was going to be on here crying. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was so personal um, for not just for me, but just so beautiful for those of you who are here as well. Like the Lord, the father, he is looking for us to just rest in him, to just trust in him, to just have faith in him, to just love on him, to believe him. And I know that many of you have, are experiencing such insurmountable feeling pressure um, just from either warfare or if it's witchcraft or even if it's just weary weariness, like weariness. And I just feel like there are so many of you, blessings to you, Lady Angeline, that may be battling discouragement, disappointment, despair, you know, even depression, worry, panic, anxiety. You know, it's been a long, hard, wait, fought battle as well. But let me tell you, um, there is something that I heard earlier today. I just, you know, sometimes I just have TBN playing in the house, you know, just to have a word always going in the house. And um, Pastor Robert Morris, he said that um, you may be in a fight, but he's already given it to you. And that was such confirmation of the word that we received when uh, we were in Joshua and God was just talking about, you know, I've already given it to you. And maybe you're at the place at where you're about to cross over. Maybe you're in the place of preparation or maybe you've already gotten to where you're supposed to be and now you're fighting for your land. But to know that he is literally, he's already given it to you in Jesus name. And so, you know, while you know that sometimes it's just so important to hear the confirmation. Absolutely. That 1111 been blessed in my Shonda Lady Penny. And earlier today, it's funny that you said that because I asked father, I said, what time do I go live? And I thought I would go live. You know, it was like, oh, that's cute. I could have went live at 1054, which would have been 1154 and 954 or 854, whatever, um, since we're in Isaiah 54. But um, he was like, go live by 11. And so it's funny that you said that about 11, 11, because I was like, okay, well, I guess we're in the 11th month. How you doing? You know, we're in the month of Av, it's transition, however, new beginnings, okay, you know, and so like um, being as though you brought up the 11, 11, I still, three words. So today it was confirmation. Oh, to God be the glory. Um, well, receive this Connecticut, okay? <laughs> like you can receive this too. I love the number 12 though as well. Um, apostolic fullness and all that, the divine government of God and his he's in absolute control and rule as well. But the 1111, let me say this real quick, um, regarding uh Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 11, actually. And um, I'm going to start here first. I believe it's in Luke chapter number 11, 11. Absolutely. It's shown up is. It's the one that I was giving you, um, Lady Brooke. And it talks about, you know, it, would any of you ask, you know, who has a child who asked for a loaf of bread, give him like a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, would you give him like something raggedy? You know what I'm saying? And so it goes into how much more would your heavenly father give you at, as you at, actually, let's turn there really quickly. I believe that um, obviously since it keep coming up, that's something that need to be read tonight too. And if y'all got to go, you got to go. That's okay. I'm here to release this to whomever needs it tonight. 
or you can catch the replay. So Luke chapter number 11, um, I'm going to start in verse number 10 because that's how it's lined up in the message translation. It says, don't bargain with God, be direct, ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your little boy asks for a serving of fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? If your little girl asks for an egg, do you trick her with a spider? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children. And don't you think the father who conceived you in love will give the Holy Spirit when you ask him? Listen, and so it's just about asking, seeking, and knocking. The other thing that speaks out to me when you look at... um. 11 11 uh, oftentimes when i see that father's confirmation is to me is in the book of hebrews uh chapter number 11 verse number 11 and so this is whomever is for you know test the spirit if it's for you make sure that you go to father for it and see what else he might have for you but it says here message translation by faith baron sarah who was able to become pregnant old woman as she was at the time. And I just believe that I'm here tonight for a lot of you who feel like, you know, it's so late in the game. Like, is it too late for me? Is it over? You know, like, is it going to ever happen? Do I keep on hoping, wishing, waiting? Because some of you feel like you're wishing. And that's why Father wants you to get to the place where you're trusting in him. You're resting in him. You believe him to be faithful. And so it says, because she believed the one who made a promise would do what he said. And I just believe that those of you who feel like there are areas in your life that are barren, that have experienced barrenness, you will be able, hallelujah, to conceive and to give birth to the promise that God has rendered unto you because you believe the one who made the promise would do what he said. It says that's how, how it happened, that from one man's dead and shriveled loins. Can it get any worse than that? I mean, the Bible just really called him out for that. Um, who's dead and shriveled loins, there are now people numbering into the millions. That is how our God works. I'm telling you. And that just blessed me right there. So the word of the Lord tonight, before we belabor the time in Isaiah chapter number 54, and, and I'm just going to read it how I feel it. I just feel such a sweet presence of the Lord. And I also believe that this is his loving word to those of you um, who will receive it of your gentle, your kind, your loving father. Yes, though, let me don't get it twisted. He's still a God of judgment. He's still a God of wrath. But he wants to speak to those tonight, to his sons, to his daughters, whoever this word is for as a loving, good, good father, you know, and, and that's been in my spirit. You know, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. You know, it's who I am. And when we realize who he is and that we're loved by him, it will help you put in perspective who you are. And it's so important to realize who you are in him. That way it'll enable you to believe and trust that he is faithful, that promise. And thank you so much for the super hearts, Lady Catherine. May the blessing of the Lord overtake you. Not only that, like earlier today, I was talking to him and I was like, you know, with this fear um, and the panic and the dread that's going around. And, you know, so much of it is fed in everything, in our media and everything. And it's almost like a spirit not almost, it is a spirit that's going around, like because so many people are experiencing that. And so if you are sensitive to different things, you might be picking it up. And so, you know, one of the things that he encouraged me, you know, of course, we know God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And some of you have become fearful that, you know, are you going to do it? Like you feel in a panic, like you don't know if it's too late, if it's over, what have you. And so um, the next scripture that he gave me was in first John. And he says that perfect love casts out all fear because fear has torment. And so I believe that this is all tying into his word and his love letter to us tonight, because he wants you to know that he loves you so much that he will not fail you. And when you trust and believe that he's going to do what he said he was going to do, not because you've been the good little Christian and you crossed every T and you dotted every I and you got this wonderful report card in heaven, but no, 
but because he's a good, good father and because he loves you and because he desires to be good to you. That was another word um, that I caught earlier today by prophetic drive time. And so um, listen, um, as far as the title, but that's what he wants to do. That's literally what he wants to do. So Isaiah 54, message translation, verse number one says, sing barren woman who has never had a baby. And maybe for you, you know, it's like you birth children, but you weren't able to birth a business. You birth children, but you haven't been married yet, you know? And so there's an area in your life where there is barrenness son, man, woman, daughter, whoever you are, wherever you find yourself, there may be an area in your life where you feel like it's been barren, like you've never felt like you had success in that area, you know? And so he says, sing barren woman who has never had a baby, fill the air with song, you who've never experienced childbirth, you're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women. God says so. And this is so significant, not because, you know, maybe child bearing, rearing, whatever ain't your thing, but maybe it's the essence of understanding that in these times, in biblical times, you weren't even a woman if you didn't have any children. And so if you you had only girls is basically was half a woman, which is crazy because, you know, with that being said, it's not our seed that determines the sex of the child anyway. But you were so much honored if you had were able to bear sons. And so it determined, you know, your class, your legacy, your lineage, you know, um, that which was going to come after you and support you, even as far as the men, that which was going to carry on your name. And so in our society, you know, it's it's not some, but if you understand the context of what he was saying, so those of you who feel like you have not achieved success in a particular area in your life, and that happens to be the area where you're battling or where you are fighting for a promise right now, or the, where, you know, you're struggling in your mind to continue to believe God because he is giving you a promise in that area and you still have yet to see it come to pass. And so he said, I want you to sing because you're ending up with far more more children than all those childbearing women. God says so. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Men of God, y'all can take heed to this too. Uh, clear lots of ground for your tents. I want you to make room, the Lord is saying. For those of you who feel like, you know, you don't have enough. It feels like, you know, where is what I've been believing for? He says, clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out and think big. God wants you to think big. He wants you to believe big. He wants you to imagine. He wants you to consider it. He wants you to consider it in your mind. He wants you to envision it. He says, think big. Some of us have been thinking too small. He says, use plenty of rope, drive the tent pegs deep because you're going to need lots of elbow room. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. You're going to need lots of elbow room for what he's going to do for you and in your life. Listen, we ain't bumping into each other. Like we're not going to have a one bedroom. Some of you have been in smaller spaces. You've downsized, you know, that kind of thing because you're waiting on, you know, father to release your finances or your income, or you're waiting for your God ordained spouse, your mate to be able to share space with whatever your thing is. He said, make lots of room. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. Hallelujah. And for you again, maybe a family hasn't been what the Lord promised you. Maybe it's going to be your growing streams of income that he's going to release to you because everybody is not been called to marriage and that's okay. So I don't want you to feel a type of way. You know what I'm saying? If you've been called to singleness, you single, save and satisfied, and that's your thing. God bless you. This can be for the streams of income. God is saying, make room for the businesses. I want you to birth, make room for the various ministries. I want you to occupy and things I want you to do. Whatever that thing is, he says, hallelujah, make room. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take 
over whole nations. The father says, you're going to take over whole nations. I know you've been subject to everybody else. You've been subject to what everybody else wanted. You've been trying to be good and cool with everybody. You've helped build everybody. You've helped strengthen everybody. You've helped support everybody. You're the one that everybody calls on. And the Lord says, hallelujah, you are going to take over. Hallelujah. Not just a little bit, but whole nations. Hallelujah. You're going to resettle abandoned cities things have been abandoned things that have been forsaken these things have that have been forgotten hallelujah god is going to cause you to the uh, and i hear the lord right now and the lord is saying that many of you are getting ready to occupy hallelujah not only occupy but uh, take control of you're going to be able to take um hallelujah possession of and ownership of vacant cities vacant thank you holy spirit vacant buildings, vacant properties in Jesus name. They have been waiting for you to take possession for you to take ownership in Jesus name, not just a home for you, but God says that he has rental properties in the name of Jesus. He has a landlord anointing for some of you as well in Jesus name, or maybe you won't be a landlord. You'll just be the owner and you'll have other people manage your properties. But the Lord says that he is going to cause you, hallelujah, to be able to take ownership and possession of vacant properties in Jesus name. Listen, it says you're going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. And some of you are like, God, you know, I just don't know. You know, you're scared to make a confession. I, I, and so earlier I was reading a word and I was like, you know, and, and I began to release the promise of the Lord. And it's, I'm telling you, my stomach kind of leaped and it's kind of jumped at the same time. And it kind of sunk just a little bit because it's like, I'm professing this, but what if you don't? And remember we were talking about resurrection, how Mary and Martha, when they came to rolling away the stone, that's when it has to confront that I am opening this up. And so I am opening it up because I'm expecting you to do this. Like, so if I open it up and you don't open, I'm going to be embarrassed, but some of us fail to move forward or we fail to, um, to realize that God is really doing it, to really enjoy it in the moment and in the season, which is going to cause it to progress because we feel like something might happen. And so are we going to be embarrassed again? Are you going to, you know, not put, you know, put, which I don't advise, you know, put all your dating game or whatever on social media because you don't want to be embarrassed again? Are you going to not, you know, talk about your relationship because you're afraid that they're going to walk off? It's okay to be private. It's another thing to be in fear that you're going to lose what God has promised you, or you're going to be in rejection or abandonment. The devil is a liar and a loser. God says you are not abandoned. You belong to me. Hello, somebody. So listen, it says, don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Listen, you cannot have fear in this hour or in the season of what God is getting ready to do because you need faith in this hour and faith without works is dead. So you have to have the action that corresponds with the faith. Hallelujah. And then that faith with the corresponding action is the evidence of things that you haven't seen yet, but it's coming. It's going to happen. And so the Lord is saying, I want you to rest in me, but I need you to have active faith where you're able to decree my word, declare my word and trust in me to be faithful. So you won't be embarrassed. Don't hold back. The Lord is saying, don't hold back. Don't hold back for fear. Don't hold back for shame. Don't hold back for guilt of previous seasons. Don't hold back because you're like, I don't know. I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to be wrong again. And you're tired. And so you're holding back some of you. And God is like, I want all of you. I need all of you. I need all of you on deck. And when I give you what I give you, when I release it, whether it's a job, whether it's a new business, you cannot hold back. You got to bring all of you in the game. Listen, all of you, all of you, all of you in the game. Like he told me um, a few weeks ago, he said that he was going to be sending an opportunity Hallelujah. And he said, and I need you to jump for it. I need to jump at it and I need you to be all in. This is not the time for you to consider or wonder and waver, you know, or be halt between two opinions and decisions and thoughts processes, but jump all in with all that you have because you have nothing to lose, beloved. There's no regrets. The only regret is regretting, never trying, never attempting, never believing, never going for it in Jesus name. So don't let the enemy make you 
you feel like, you know, you need to hold back because you could be the very thing that's halting or delaying or your blessing. So don't get you out the way. The Lord says in his word, don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. What a promise. What a promise. Don't hold back. But to know that you're not going to come up short, you don't have to worry about it because he's already giving you his promise that you're not going to come up short in the name of Jesus. You are going to come out on top. This thing is going to work for you in the name of the Lord. Listen, it goes on to say, you'll forget all about the humiliations of your youth. And some of you have been humiliated by what didn't work, by what didn't happen, by who didn't show up, by what didn't work out. And some of you, you were violated in your youth and the different things that occurred to you. And the Lord says, don't worry, hallelujah. You're gonna forget about all the humiliations of your youth and the indignities of being a widow will fade from your memory. And some of you, you know, maybe you've been divorced. Maybe, you know, you've had all your children out of wedlock and now you feel in a type of way. Listen, and so you felt like, you know, you were in they were indignities and it's going to fade from your memory. In other words, that's not your identity. And so that's not how the Lord sees you. So you need to stop seeing you that way as well. Hallelujah. It says for your maker is your bridegroom. Listen, you don't have to feel like that because God, your maker is your bridegroom. You are not alone. He says his name, God, God of the angel armies and some of you who feel like, you know, I, I'm out here all by myself. I got to do the, all this by myself. And, you know, I say that with caution because for those of you, again, that are believing God and God has promised you kingdom marriage and you're made and you've been called to marriage and that kind of thing, you know, that he is going to provide. But in the interim, he says, I'm your bridegroom. And so when you're looking to have that two parent household, that two um, income stream household, father, I need your help, your assistance. You're my bridegroom until you sin who you sin. I need your assistance in this hour. Listen, he says, your redeemer is the holy of Israel, known as God of the whole earth. You were like an abandoned wife, devastated with grief, and God welcomed you back. Some of you, have felt like you were devastated and you, I mean, it's, it's a loss. So you've literally been grieving and in desperation and just devastation. And you felt like that. You felt like you were abandoned, like you were left out, out to dry, left hanging. And some of you literally, that has been your experience through your encounter with your marriage and your belief in God with restoration and the Lord's promises to you. Hallelujah. That he has welcomed you back. He has welcomed you back. I know you felt like he left left you out high and dry, but he says that I've welcomed you back like a woman married young and then left, says your God, your redeemer. God says, I left you but for a moment. Some of you feel like God has left you. He didn't, you know, it's like, where are you? Hello, 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 hello. You know, they keep on telling me, but where are you at though? Where are you at though? Where are you at though? I'm just trying to say. Um, and so, and it's like, he says, I'm right here. I left you just for a minute, but I got you. Listen, y'all give me just a second. I need to grab this so that we don't, I, I wasn't planning on going live. So I'm gonna grab this really quick. And I'll be right back. I promise. I promise. Thank you. Hallelujah. My intro was a little bit longer than I anticipated. So that's where we are. Um, so we had less battery than I expected, but we good. It's all good in the neighborhood. I want to make sure we don't lose any of you while we're releasing the word of the Lord. So let's get this going. So as we were reading, we're going to get back here and I'm actually going to switch now to the passion translation. I'm in verse number seven. I hope y'all can hear me. Okay. Um, Isaiah 54, I'm in verse number seven in the Passion Translation. It says, for just a brief moment, I deserted you, 
but with tender feelings of love, I will gather you back to me. And some of you feel like, God, you left me hanging. You left me high and dry, like for real, for real. And he said, yeah, I deserted you, but with tender feelings of love, I will gather you back to me. In a surge of anger for just the briefest moment, I hid my face from you. And some of you have felt like, God, you know, I can't see you. I can't feel you. I, I don't know where you are, what's going on. I just need to hear something. And this is your father's love letter to you tonight. Um, and it says, but with everlasting kindness, I will show you my cherishing love, says Yahweh, your kinsman redeemer. Listen, the kinsman redeemer was close enough to be able to redeem you. He's close enough to be able to take you in. He's close enough to be able to call you as his own, to make you his own. Hallelujah. And he says, says Yahweh, your kinsman redeemer. To me, this is like the time when I vowed that the waters of Noah's flood would never again cover the earth. Now I vow to you. Listen, oh my God, that touched me right there. It's like, it's one thing for you to vow that you're never going to allow the earth to be flooded again. And that's all good and dandy. I'm grateful for that, Father. But sometimes I just need a word for me. Anybody out there feel like that? Like, so I just need you to talk to me. I need something for me right now. I'm grateful that, the, you know, the world, even though it's going a little crazy right now, blessings to you, Lady Jean McMurray Leak, praying for y'all. Um, even though all that's going on, I need to hear something for me for where I'm at and what I need to do, where I'm going so that I can continue on. Um, and so it says to me, this is like the time when I vowed those that the waters of Noah's flood would never again cover the earth. Now I vow to you, this is father's promise directly to you that I will neither be angry with you nor rebuke you. The Lord will neither be angry with you nor rebuke you. This is his promise to you. Even if the mountains were to crumble and the hills disappear, my heart of steadfast, faithful love will never leave you. Listen, I know that people left you. I, I know that people might have abandoned you. I know that people, things, you know, they promised it was going to be forever and all that. And the Lord says, no, he says, me, I will never leave you. And my covenant of peace with you will never be shaken. Never be shaken. You're not going to have to worry about that anymore. For, so for those of you who have dealt with, you know, feelings of abandonment or rejection or loss and that kind of thing, know that he says, I'm not going to cause it. It's never going to be shaken, says Yahweh. This covenant of peace or shalom that God has made with us, his people, it's God's covenant promise is that his shalom, his peace, his prosperity, success, wholeness and well-being will be our portion all of our days on the earth, even according to Ephesians 2.14, this is saying by Yahweh, whose love and compassion will never give up on you. I need you to hear that today. The Hebrew word for compassion is rakam, and it means to love deeply like a mother's love. And it's a homonym for the womb with an implication that God's love is like the love of a mother carrying a child in her womb. You need to know that a mother who is carrying a child in her womb, you can't forget that baby, that baby going to start kicking. You're not going to forget that child. You're carrying it around with you everywhere you go. God is not going to forget you. He has you with him. And he says that I will never give up on you. And I know that sometimes you feel like giving up on yourself. I know you feel like just like, is this even worth it? I'm, I'm over it. I'm tired. Some of you, you know, you trying to be mother of the year. You have no other choice. Some of you fathers doing the best that you can. Some of you men of God just been working and doing everything you know to do the lord says he will never give up on you verse 11 you have you unhappy one storm tossed and troubled i believe that somebody might feel like that tonight you're unhappy you feel like you've been tossed by the storms of life you're troubled he says listen i am ready to rebuild you with precious stones the lord says i got you i'm about to set your stones in antimony he says, listen, I'm going to embed your foundation with sapphires. I will make your towers of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious, delightful stones. All your children would be taught by Yahweh, and great will be their peace and prosperity. 
Somebody needs to know that God got you and your babies covered. He got you and your kids covered. He has you taken care of in Jesus name. He says, hallelujah, your children will be taught by me and great will be their peace and prosperity. In other words, you don't have to you don't have to worry about how they are going to end up, how things are going to end up. Listen, he says, I got them. Yeah, he would never leave you as an orphan, Lady Carolyn. It says you will be established in righteousness. Oppression be far from you. Oppression be far from you. And fear be far from you. Listen, that's in his word. Fear be far from you. Listen, somebody needs to put that in the chat because you needed to hear that tonight. Fear will be far from me. Fear is far from me. I reject it. I deny it in the name of Jesus. Fear is far from me. I'm in Isaiah chapter number 54. I'm in the Passion Translation. We started at verse number one. We're now on verse 14. He says, you'll be established. You'll be settled. I got you. You're not going to be uprooted no more. He says, oppression far from you. No longer will you feel oppressed and boggled down and where everything seems like it's hovering over you so heavy. I rebuke and release that spirit of heaviness off of you in Jesus name. Fear will be far from you. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that it has to go because the perfect love of our father and of our God, hallelujah, it has no torment. Listen, and fear has torment. It's not of the father in Jesus name. And so no longer will you be afraid to trust in the Lord. No longer will you be unsure whether or not he's going to do what he's going to do or have this fear coming up because you just don't know how it's going to work out. And so it has you feeling the type of way. The devil is a liar in Jesus name, because even Job, I think it was Job chapter number three. He says, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. You cannot afford to be in a place of fear that causes you to be in a position where you almost bring about the negative circumstances that you didn't want, that you don't want. The devil is a liar in Jesus name. So we will trust in the name of our God. There's a song um, about, we will trust in the name of our God. How's it go? In the name, in the name of our God. I can't remember it, but I'll, I'll have to look it up later. But it's talking about the name of our God. We will rest. We will trust in the name of our God. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. I will rest assured because I realize that my God, the God that I serve, and I'm talking to you so that this can be your confession. That's why I'm using I statements. I realize in Jesus name that our God exalts his word above his very name. And so if God is that serious about his word that he exalts it above his name, then I might as well trust in him that he is faithful and that he is going to keep his word because he is not a man that he should lie. And if he exalts his word greater than the fact that he is God of the universe, God of the, of the galaxies, God of the everything, he's the creator. He's the most high. Like, if he exalts his word above that, how in the world do I take for a minute to fear that he's not going to be faithful to fulfill what he spoke over my life? No matter what it looks like, no matter what it looks like, even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. He never stops working and he's never going to let you down. So fear be far from you. Yes, terror will not come near you, nor will you be afraid. Listen, his promise is that it's not going to come near you, nor will you be afraid. It's time for you to stop fearing everything. It's time for you to stop worrying about it happening because the Lord says, boo, I I got you. You ain't even got a trip. I had you before it even came about, before it even seemed to come around. Hallelujah. I promise you, I promise you, says the Lord tonight, that he has you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to switch back to the message transition because this is where the word began to bless me tonight. Hallelujah. And Actually, I'm going to go back to verse number 12 in the message. It says, all your children will have God for their teacher. What a mentor for your children. You'll be built solid, grounded in righteousness, far from any trouble. Nothing to fear, far from terror. It won't even come close. 
it won't even come close to you. It can't come close to you. It can't even threaten you. The devil is a liar because you are already protected. You're safe. You're grounded by the Lord as you don't worry beloved but that's for somebody tonight in the name of jesus that he has you you are covered by the lord in the name of jesus i'm going to continue if anyone attacks you don't for a moment suppose that i sent them this blessed me right here if anyone attacks you if anyone tries to come at you if the devil if a spirit of fear anything tries to come at you he says don't suppose for a moment don't for a moment suppose that i sent them listen the devil will have you thinking that god is just this is punishment you in trouble these are your consequences this is what he's doing because you shouldn't have did this and because you didn't do that and and i'm not saying to live out here reckless and willy-nilly what i'm saying is that we have a good good father and yes he chastens whom he loves but he does it in love and um we're in um Isaiah 54. And so even as he does that, though, don't allow the enemy to have you in a place of this condemnation. That's not how Father corrects us. Don't allow yourself to be in condemnation where you're beating yourself up, you know, feeling like you've messed up everything. Some of you, the word I just feel like is screwed up everything. It's like you feel like it's your fault that everything is happening the way it is. And, you know, if you would have did this better, if you would have made this choice, if you would have, the devil is a liar. This is not punishment. It's preparation because it is possession time. Let me say that again. This, what you're experiencing, this, what you are encountering is not punishment. It's preparation because it's possession time. It's time for you to possess your promises in the name of Jesus. He says, blessings to you, Lady Tracy. And if any should attack, nothing will come of it. Listen, that broke me right there. If any should attack, if anyone comes against you, nothing's going to come of it. No will come of it. You need to understand that nothing is going to come of it. I know we read that, you know, the weapon may form, but it's not going to prosper against you. I, you, I just need to hear it in my terms that it, nothing's going to come of it. If they accuse you, if they try to sue you, nothing's going to come of it. If they try to, you know, send you to court for something else, nothing's going to come of it. Listen, nothing's going to come of it. Some of you who are facing eviction, some of you who have been facing, you know, um, different I, what's the word father some of you have been facing I, I feel like you know creditors they have been coming after you just different things and the lord says nothing's going to come of it you need to not allow that to intimidate you don't allow it to worry you in the name of jesus some of you have received different notices in the mail um different uh, in interactions and you feel like you don't have the income or the finances for it. So it got you all in your feelings. And the Lord wanted me to tell you tonight that for some, those of you this word is for, nothing's going to come of it. And so don't allow things when they seem like they come up against you to cause you to come into this panic or fear or anxiety. So you don't make the calls that you need to. You don't handle the business that you need to because if you're feeling so overwhelmed, again, oppression is far from you. Fear is far from you in Jesus name. And so he says, if any should attack, if it's an attack, nothing's going to come of it. Don't lay down, beloved. Don't lay down in fear or, you know, just feeling like you're abandoned. What's the point of fighting anymore? Listen, you need to know, hallelujah, that nothing's going to come of it. And some of you, I don't know. I just keep on seeing like tickets. I don't know if you're worried about a ticket that has come up and maybe you feel like you can't necessarily afford it. The father is saying nothing's going to come of it. Maybe you need to call the officer and say, listen, this is my circumstances. Can you waive it? Maybe you need to go to court and nothing, nobody's going to show up. It's not going to be there. Or maybe you just need to rest in the Lord because even though you don't feel like you have it, you're going to have what you need. And so nothing's going to come of it in a devastating manner. Like the enemy is trying to cause you to play tricks in your mind and in your head, trying to get you to think about this negative outcome. The devil is a liar. 
God has this all under control. God is in control of your circumstance and he's in control of your outcome. He's alpha and omega. Nothing happens outside of his authorization and his knowing in the name of Jesus. And so you also need to understand that just like the problem is, is in, you know, he is aware of through me. It's so to believe. All right. And so you can rest in the Lord. Nothing's going to come of it. I create the blacksmith who fires up his fix a weapon designed to kill, but I also create the destroyer, but no weapon that can hurt you has ever been forged. Listen, you need to know no weapon that could ever hurt you. I mean, like take you out has ever been forged. It's never been created in the name of Jesus. You need to know that you need to believe that you need to rest in that in Jesus name. It's never been forged. It's never been created. See, we just read. Oh my goodness. I thank you, Father, for your word. In the Passion Translation, it says, see, I'm the one who created the craftsman who fans the coals into a fire and forges a weapon fit for its purpose. The Lord says, I do this and I am the one who created the destroyer to destroy. But I promise you that no weapon meant to hurt you will succeed. Somebody needed to hear that promise of the Lord in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Blessings to you watching from Belgium. God bless you. Hallelujah. In Jesus name, he says, but I promise you that no weapon meant to hurt you will succeed and you will refute every accusing word spoken against you. You will have a say. You will have a say. You will be able to refute it in Jesus name. The promise is the inheritance of Yahweh's servants. This promise is the inheritance of Yahweh's servants and their vindication is from me, says Yahweh. Brooke, you probably needed that, Lady Brooke. God bless you. Listen, let me read it again um, in the message. Any accuser who takes you to court will be dismissed as a liar. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. Because you feel like people have made accusations against you. They didn't said this. They didn't put they, your name in their mouth. They're saying whatever, whatever. And you're like, you know, God, is it really like that? No. He says, listen, any accuser who takes you to court will be dismissed as a liar. They said. If it's not, they're going to be dismissed, case dismissed, court dismissed, courts adjourned. They're dismissed liar in the name of Jesus because it is not a father. And he began to tell me, he said, I know your heart. I know your heart. And so thereby, this is my promise to you concerning these things, because I know your heart. No matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody believes, no matter what anybody is saying, the Lord says, I know your heart. I made you. Man might look at the outer appearance, but I search the heart. I look at the heart. That is me. That's how I roll, says the Lord. He says, this is what God's servants can expect. I'll see to it that everything works out for the best. Oh my God, that promise right there, I was like, done. He says, listen, this is what God's servants can expect. I'll see to it that everything works out for the best, God's decree. And I know all the time, so many times, blessings to you, Lady Sherry, to God be the glory. Um, while she said, uh, this is the word from the Lord today, she had to dispute an eviction notice. They had the wrong name and she's disputing it now. Listen, let me tell you, they'll be dismissed as a liar. Dismissed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen. I'll see to it that everything works out for the best, God's decree. And I know, she said that happened to her two days ago. The person dismissed the accuser who was speaking lies about me. See, listen, you can't make this stuff up. I thank God for y'all just coming on here telling the truth. We hear so many times, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for the good of those that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. And I believe that promise. I'm so grateful for it. But when I stumbled on this right her, right her, right here, I like it touched me in a whole nother level. I'll see to it. God's going to see to it that everything works out for the best, beloved. I don't know what you've been concerned about, what you've been worried about, what you've been believing God for, what you've been believing it to happen. He says, I'm going to see to it. I'm taking this personally regarding you. 
I'll see to it that everything works out for the best. This is God's decree. Oh my gosh. I pray that this word has blessed you the way it blessed me. It wasn't for me to add no Mia isms on it, Lady Jeremiah isms on it, because it's just a love letter from our father. He just wanted to release his words to you to let you know that you can sing, O Baron, and that you can stretch out your tent because you can expect that there needs to be room for more. You're going to have elbow room in the name of Jesus. You need more room. Hallelujah. And not only that, but his promises are true and they are yes and amen to the glory of the Lord. Blessings to you, Renee. And I just believe that for those of you who are here, I'm going to pray with you and then I'm going to release the rest of the song. Um, and so we'll probably be on here more. The father is saying that it's time and he's releasing his heart over his children because it's time for you to occupy. But many of you, in order to occupy, you have to be able to change your mindset. We have to have the mind of Christ and we have to, we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that comes in realizing our identity, who we are in him. And he will ensure that everything works out to the best. He said he'll see to it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every vessel that is on here tonight. I thank you for everyone who has met us here. To God be the glory. Hey, Pastor Isaac Doyle, I love you, man of God. I'm so grateful for you. Please kiss your lovely wife for me. I love you all. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you so much for every vessel that is here. I thank you, Father, that you make no mistakes. I thank you, Father, that you have multiple streams. I thank you, Father, hallelujah, that they will have more room for expanded family. I thank you, Father, that you're putting in them in the place to be able to take over in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that even as you made the promise to Noah that you would never destroy it again, Father, I thank you that you have made your promise to your people that the things that they experience, they're never going to have to go through those things again. Father, you may have been disappointed. You may have been angry, but for a moment, but with your loving kindness, you are drawing us into yourself and you're revealing yourself, your heart and your love in Jesus name. And so we receive that by the power of the living God in Jesus name. And we receive our identity in you. And that enables us to not have to worry, not have to stress, not have to trip because even as Jesus was secure in you, Father, so too can we be secure in you and your love and your intention and your purpose and your plan for our lives under understanding that nothing can happen unless you author. And so the devil, no matter how hard he tries, he cannot take us before our time, just like Jesus can never go before his time. Father, we understand that as we are close to you, as we are at your feet, as we are upon your heart, as we are there, Father, positioned, nestled in you, Father, we realize that you will whisper your secrets to us. We don't have to worry about coming up short or being slighted or anything like that because you will speak a word to us. And so, Father, I thank you for your love and your kindness, your tender mercies. Father, I pray right now that you will renew the mind of everyone watching on here tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray that they would take upon them the mind of Christ and that they would be transformed by the renewing of their minds. Father, I pray that they will let this mind be in them that is also in Christ Jesus, that mind that says I'm secure in the Father's love. Hallelujah, because I don't have to look at what I have done, didn't do. Listen, when Jesus was, um, when, when God authorized him, when God ordained him, when God expressed his love over him, when he was being baptized, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus hadn't worked nothing. He hadn't did no miracles. He hadn't done all that. He hadn't been launching the ministry, should I say, but he said, I love him. This is my beloved son. I'm claiming him as my own in whom I am well pleased. And the Lord says to tell you tonight that you are, hallelujah, his beloved. And not only are you his beloved, but he is well pleased in you. It's not about what you did, what you didn't do. It's about who you are and you belong to him and you have to understand that. And when you come uh, understand that, hallelujah, you will do everything you do to please him and he will not withhold no good thing from those who love him in the name of Jesus. And so you can rest assured, hallelujah, that nothing's going to happen outside of God's timing and everything he's promised is going to happen exactly when it's supposed to in Jesus name. 
Hallelujah. And that you would walk, you would walk uprightly before the Lord in holiness and in purity. Hallelujah. And also with the heart for Father and, and the mind of Christ that you only do what you see your Father doing. You only say what you hear your Father saying, that you are his echo in the earth, that you are an ambassador uh, of heaven, that you realize that you are a kingdom kid. You realize in Jesus' name that you are just a pilgrim passing through. You realize that you are are not just a human being. You are a spirit that is having a human experience. You are just here on this earth for a time having a human experience, but you, hallelujah, your reservation is already in heaven and on high in Jesus' name. And so we have been here. We are here to proclaim the governmental kingdom, hallelujah, of the Lord, even in this earth, in this era. And so when you realize who you are and you stand up in who God has made you to be, we walk in the authority of Almighty God, and we release the will of the Lord through our declaration and through our decrees in Jesus' name, and we will begin to see the things that we have spoken, hallelujah, and we will continue to say the things of the Lord until we see what we've said in Jesus' name. I believe it's I, uh, the Bosha, Job chapter number 22, verse number 28, I believe, and uh, you know, it says that you can decree and declare a thing and it shall be established, but there's another translation that says you can make a decision. You can decide to decree a thing. Some of you just need to decide to decree it, to declare it. What God is saying and what God is saying from the heavens that you are bringing and pulling into the earth. Remember the revelation that God gave me that we are seated in heavenly places. We are at the throne room of heaven. And if we are already up there, literally I'm up there with what the things that God said, and I can pull that down with me, even into my earthly experience. I believe God God, that everything that he said is true. I believe God that every promise spoken is a promise kept. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus, that even as Hebrews 11 and 11, that you will receive strength to conceive seed, to bear the promise of God, because you judge him faithful, that promise in the name of Jesus, despite how impossible things may feel, despite how impossible things may say, no matter how how impossible things may seem. I decree and declare that God is getting ready to call supernatural miracles to manifest his promises in your life. If it's a miracle you need, it's a miracle you're going to get. Some of you, it's not going to walk out like this, you know, se sequential thing, you know, that that's not what a Kairos is. This is a Kairos moment, not just a Kairos moment where everything is lining up, but this is a Moed time of God. This is an appointed time of God. This is you appointed time when it's to happen in Jesus name. Listen, hallelujah. I decree and declare not only that, um, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's a Hereros moment. Listen, in the Greek, they have multiple words from time. It's chronological order, which is like a calendar or one, two, three, four. And then there was Kairos. There was that appointed time of the Lord, you know, the Moed, the appointed time of the Lord, the Kairos where things are happening. But then there was the Hereros time of God. And with the Herrero's time of God, that means that everything has to line up at that moment. Everything that needs to line up will line up to make that thing come to pass. Listen, that means that neither hell nor high water, nor things present, nor things to come. Listen, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, nothing, hallelujah, can separate and nothing can block and stop the Lord from releasing what he said that he released in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord will bless you with the wife that he has for you in Jesus' name. Listen, because she probably not going to be like me, but I respect the compliment of that. I pray in the name of Jesus for everyone who is believing God for their God ordained mate in Jesus name. I pray that father would show you your divine mate. I pray that God would reveal to you, you the rib that he has for you, man of God. And I pray that beloved, that, that the Lord would shape in you and he would fashion you women of God so that you are, as you're presented before the husband that God has for you, he can see himself in you in Jesus name. I pray that father would, I believe that this is a time for supernatural kingdom marriage. So it's interesting that um, brother Jay got on here talking about a wife, not a girlfriend, not a hookup, but I'm saying, you know, a wife, hallelujah. God, it has husbands. He has sons that are ready for their wives and he has daughters that are ready for their husbands. And now it's 
the divine timing of Almighty God. I just felt something shift with that clap. And let me do it again. Let me do it again. There's a shift in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, things are shifting and things are being broken off right now by the power of the living God in Jesus' name. God is lining things up in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One, two, three. They're lining up in the name of Jesus. I keep on seeing sequential order, not because of Kronos, but because God is his promise to me that he is lining things up even when you don't see it. Hallelujah. And God has a way of causing everything to come together. And so with you, beloved, God is going to, hallelujah, cause whatever needs to line up in your life to line up in your life. So the fulfillment of his promise will take place in Jesus name. Some of you, it will seem like not just supernatural things that are happening, but it's going to be unusual occurrences that cause things to happen that maybe you would have never anticipated, never expected, but God is faithful and he's going to do it. So whatever you're believing God for, You can rest in him. You can trust in his promise. His words are sure. His promises are yes and amen to the glory of the Lord. And you can rest in this word tonight in Jesus name that he's going to see that it works out for the best. That is God's decree for you and for me. Father, in Jesus name, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your supernatural release in the name of Jesus. Father, and I just pray right now for Adams who have seemed to be sleeping. I say that as the men of God um, who are waiting for their Eve, they didn't even realize some of them that they needed it. Father, I pray that you will fashion the helper that you have. That they're suitable for them and that, you know, men aren't trying to make women suitable for them, but they realize that you are presenting them the helper that they need that they will be suitable. And Father, I pray right now for a supernatural preparation for the women of God. And I thank you, Father, that this is the hour where you are causing, hallelujah, the women to be presented to their God-ordained mate in Jesus' name. And this is the hour where you are awakening men out of their sleep and out of their slumber. I also decree and declare in Jesus' name that you are closing up the wounds. Some of them had wounds from you opening up it for you to Make room for the women of God. Um, Some of them had openings. They had wounds that were opened up because they were opened prematurely to people um, that cause pain or hurt or what have you. But Father, you are closing up wounds as you are um, preparing and have prepared the daughters for their husbands in Jesus name, according to Genesis chapter 18, verse um, uh, Genesis chapter number two, 18 through 22. And you're presenting the women of God before their husbands for them to be able to identify themselves in them in Jesus name. And they will be able to become one flesh in Jesus name. A man will leave his mother and his father will cling to wife in Jesus name. I thank you, Father, for the supernatural shift in Jesus wedding, but divine marriage. I thank you that they will complete and accomplish purpose in this hour. I thank you that you are setting it up, that they will be able to go out two by two in Jesus name. Listen, I thank you, Father. He's so amazing because literally um, this word has been about birthing and barrenness. Um, It's also been about those who have not been married or felt widowed or abandoned. Listen, the Lord says this word ready to sing. Those of you who have been believing God for your God or they may, those of you who have yet to be married, those of you who, um, who've just been believing God, you've been in a space and a place it's coming. Sing, O barren in Jesus name. This you pray for this. This is what you pray for. And that you may not have thought that the circumstances that have come about were going to be the ones that were preparing you, but God will use what he chooses to prepare you to be the who he wants you to be and to make room in your heart. That way you will not forget him when he does what he says that he's going to do in your life in Jesus name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the Lord would say unto you all tonight as well, not only those of you who have felt barren, broken, um, this is for the divorcee, this is for the widow, 
This is for those who have never been married and you feel like there's been a curse on you or not even a curse. You could feel like, you know, it's just something been over you that's caused delay or things not working out or just cycles of issues. And the Lord says tonight in Jesus name, it's broken off of you now in Jesus name. Not one attack is going to work in the name of Jesus. And he's going to see that it all works out for the best in the name of Jesus. He said in this word, nothing's going to come of the attacks if anyone tries to attack you. And so rest in Lord, rest in his promises that are sure in Jesus name. And I just believe that for you. And I just decree and declare that um, anything that has been opposing or in opposition of your promise, I pray right now that it be broken by the power of the living God in Jesus name. I pray that father will supernaturally intervene so that there will be no longer any delays in Jesus name. I pray right now. Hallelujah, that the freedom of Almighty God would set you free to walk in your divine destiny, your divine marital destiny in Jesus name. I pray that anything that has been holding or standing against or been an issue in the life of the divine mate that God has for you that has created a delay. I pray right now that all of those things be broken off of them, be broken off of you now in the name of Jesus as well. I pray that every wound, uh, whether it be emotional, mental, relational, sexual, physical, spiritual, mental, whatever. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that those wounds be healed by the power of the living God in Jesus' precious name. We pray, we believe, decree, and declare. Hallelujah. I pray that you've been, you be made whole financially as well in Jesus' name. Mind, spirit, body, your will, your emotions, everything be made whole in Jesus' name. You're walking in wholeness. You're walking in fullness. I just decree it by the power of the living God in Jesus' name is our prayer. Listen, I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm so grateful for those of you who are here. I just think God is so amazing um, because for a minute it was like, oh, am I going to make this directly? But yeah, he has a way of turning, working it all for his glory and the intention that he has. And he wants you to know that, yeah, yeah, it includes your kingdom marriage. Yeah, it includes that family you've been believing for that he promised you. Listen, because it's not just about the fact that you want it. It's when it's a part of his purpose and his plan, it can't be stopped or denied. And there are promises that God has made. His promises are sure. They are true. And he is literally causing many to begin to walk in their fulfillment. It's like almost every day I see multiple engagements and proposals, you know, weddings coming up, dates coming up, you know, even a lot of them, you know, people I know or heard of or testimonies. And I'm telling telling you it's happened and it's happening. And so, um, okay. There was this one, I'll, I'll tell you guys this and increase your faith. Peace diamond forever. God bless you. I love you. Praying for you. And of God, I'm, I feel led to release these two testimonies to encourage your faith. And so if you've been feeling a little jealous or anything like that, I just pray that you Release it in the name of Jesus. You get yourself out of position. No more complaining either. Ask God to forgive you. Repent of that and all that. Okay. So um, there was a woman of God and she had went on a fast. And those of you, I don't know if y'all heard me. So we were going on a fast through August 8th, which concluded on Saturday. But before we could finish, Father was like, er, pump your brakes. Um, I want you to still continue your consecration. And so we released that word to you so you could seek father for what fast he would have you go on. According to Isaiah 58, is this not the fast that I've chosen for you? Whatever fast he's chosen for you, um, pray and seek him for your instructions, but that we would do it for 52 days. And there was going to be some things that God was going to accelerate in your life. And so, you know, whether it's consecrating social media, well, no matter what you do, I recommend that when you are on a fast that you consecrate yourself from social media, um, whatever that means. Maybe you're just not scrolling. Maybe you're just on there from business or whatever. And that's why many of you haven't heard from me. If you messaged me or sent me a prayer request or anything like that, um, it's because when I'm consecrating and, you know, whatever, he just has me to kind of pull away from all that. I'm only on there as much as necessary, um, that he authorized me to be. So, um, but yeah, with that, so there was this woman of God and she had been dating this guy for two years, two years. 
and she was um, fasting to break off the spirit of delay in her life. And so um, when she did that, after she concluded her fast, her boyfriend literally proposed to her and they got married in 11 days. Married in 11 days. This ain't got to take all day, boo. It ain't got to take all day. All it is is the timing of the Lord and a supernatural release. There was another woman of God and God promised her that she would meet her husband by the end of the year. And it was like the last week in December and she was out of town vacationing. And like, I got to get back to the States. I don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all got to free. I got, I got to get to the States because the Lord said, I'm going to meet my husband by the end of the year. And so she was not able to travel out. She stayed in Jamaica. She ended up meeting a gentleman. And so they, the Lord told her that she wouldn't date or anything like that. And I'm not telling y'all to be out here living risky. I'm telling you to walk by faith. The person that God has for you, you will know them by the spirit. And so, um, you know, use the wisdom of the Lord, let God lead you. But I'm just giving this to be able to increase your faith. Literally, she left, she came back, you know, home. She was able to get her, or the guy was able to get her information and send her a letter. They corresponded through letters. Can I tell you that within six weeks, she had went back, met his family. She was, they got married and she got pregnant on the night that she got, she got married just as God promised. And so they were married on February 14th. Again, she met him at the end of December. And so they're already expecting it does not take all day for God to do anything. Literally my mom and my dad, you know, they grew up common law marriage, whatever y'all just living together. They was shacking. But when my mom gave her life to the Lord and she was at church one day and the pastor was talking about, don't be shacking up. She was like, what's that? She didn't know. We didn't know church lingo or whatever. And they were like, it's when you are living with a man or a woman, like they're your wife, but you're not married, you know, and you're having sex or whatever. And she was like, she came home. She was like, we can't do this. You got to go. And, um, because we ain't married. He was like, I'll marry you. They got married within nine days. Nine days. Yeah, I said it. Nine days. Let me encourage you with one more. There was um, another couple and I just watched this. He's on YouTube. And so I've seen some of his YouTube videos. And so I had no idea, but he had did um, a, a live. And so there was a woman who had been watching his lives and father said that that was her husband. And so, and for her to pack up, she literally packed up everything she had and um, she started traveling across the country. The Lord sent her to this place, to that place, to this place, whatever, in preparation of her. But also those places happened to be places where he had lived or it was near his family home. And she had not, she didn't know. She was just following the leading of Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit was taking her to all these places. And so like she, I think she was from Northeast side of the country somewhere. And then she ended up in Ohio. Father led her to California. Come to find out he was in California. She didn't know that because he don't put that on YouTube, you know? And so um, anyway, she ends up within 10 minutes of his family house, da, 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 whatever. During the course of this exchange, which started around Thanksgiving, she emailed him five times to allow her to email him. The fourth time she said, I think, no, probably she said, has God told you anything about us? Because I believe that you're my husband. And he was like, eh, I think, you know, I'm like an Adam type, but I'm not your Adam because his name is actually Adam. And she was like, okay. He was like, we can be friends, but she knew what God told her. And I don't recommend that, you know, you go off telling people, you, my husband, the Lord showed me, you know, and all that, unless God tells you to. So, um, which he told her she could. So she just continued to just send him emails as friends. Um, and by the fourth email or the fifth, um, she had asked him, they were speaking and she was like, I'm tired of waiting on my Adam type. Does God have a word for me? <laughs> and so literally, um, after the fourth email, he said that God began to deal with his heart because he didn't 
see her before but those Adam experiences where God had put Adam to sleep. He had been working in the garden doing, he didn't even realize that he wanted a wife or desired a wife. It was God that said, it's not good for him to be alone. And so he prepared her. So he had been preparing Anna this whole time. And literally after um, he got off, he got that fourth email from her, God started giving him a vision of her in his future and what they would do together. And he confirmed it with his scriptures and stuff like that. When it's God ordained, you don't have to you know profess you don't have to talk nobody into it you know and all that so anyway when that happened there was another email which was when can we meet and they ended up meeting at a walmart just like god had showed her god had promised her they met and she said when they saw each other it was like they had known each other forever they embraced it was a perfect fit she was his rib so after that they were just you know they were just connected and um, they were with each other. They traveled because they did travel in ministry or whatever individually. And literally they got married within 13 days. 13 days of having the first meeting. Literally the whole process was, um, I, I want to say November. And then um, they met in late February and they got married at the beginning of March this year. This is 2020. These are 2020s that I'm talking about here. So literally God is doing it. So be encouraged, beloved, that it can happen at any moment and it doesn't have to take all day. There are things that Father is accelerating. Now we don't walk in ill wisdom. We use the Lord. Or we have the Lord. We walk by the spirit in Jesus name. But I just wanted to encourage somebody today. And it was interesting because God had told the guy, he said that I'm going to do something in the ninth week. You won't believe. And he actually met her in the ninth week of the year. And so it was a fulfillment. And so God, when he does it, talking to the both of you and he's just bringing it together. So Listen, I didn't intend for that, but I believe it was some, for somebody to encourage you because you feel like it's going to have to take forever or you've already been waiting. And so whether it's, you know, God causing that person that's been in your life to um, to propose and for you guys to get married as he father intends, not as you intend, but as the Lord intends, you know, that can happen quicker than quick, faster than fast. And then too, if it's just, you haven't met them yet, God, when he brings them into your life, it doesn't have to take all day. A matter of fact, when you look at supernatural marriage, it doesn't take all day. It doesn't. Biblical marriage didn't take all day. And so um, we utilize the wisdom of the Lord and the spirit of almighty God. And so I just release a blessing upon you in Jesus name that God would do everything that he has spoken for you to you and over your life in Jesus name and be it unto you. I love you all. Thank you so much for being on here. May you trust in the Lord for everything that he has spoken, everything that he's promised you as well. In Jesus name, it's going to happen is going to happen. Everything that he said, walk in his promises, beloved, whatever you're trusting him for and know that your God loves you and he's going to see to it that it works out for the best. God's decree. Isaiah 54. Listen, um, message translation. And then we're going to get out of here. It's already been over an hour. I want you to have a great night.